tell us top 10 pound for pound. Brought to you by uh, MMAProSport.com. Just want to let everybody know. Hey everybody, I'm going to put a link in the description. Go vote their gloves. It's the best gloves in MMA. Come on, man. I don't ask for much. Got a bunch of people calling me different names every fucking video. Don't ask for much. Fucking assholes. Hey, I'm an MMA fan. Okay, and I'm tired of going to these websites that base their top 10 pound for pounds and their rankings on political situations and giving a preference to the UFC. There's no bias in Todd's top 10 pound for pound. Number 10, Frank Yeager. He 10 and 1. I see Frank Yeager moving to the top of the lightweight division. I see him matching up with BJ Penn probably within the next year. Number 9, Mauricio Shogun Hua. He 18 and 3. Okay, his only loss in like the past five years, six years, is to Forrest Griffin. And he was fighting Forrest on a messed up knee. And he just got off his honeymoon. I ain't making any excuses for him, but if he was at 100%, that fight would have ended the same way. Number eight, BJ, the prodigy pet. BJ, I would really like to move him up on this top 10 pound for pound. But there's so many badass fighters on it. I gotta keep him at number eight. I like to move him up because he fight open weight. He'll fight 170. He'll fight 200. Like he fought Laura Machida. I think Machida weighed like 215. That fight. And I think BJ couldn't have weighed more than 170, 180. Come on. Number seven. Miguel Torres. I know. Miguel Torres coming off a loss. But Miguel Torres should have won that fight. And he know that. He fucked up. He got KO'd. In the rematch, he will win that fight, and you could you could bet on that. Cause he a better fighter, more experienced fighter, and he just got a little sloppy in the fight, and he lost. He could easily be 38 and one. Number six, the only man to beat Uriah Faber two times, Mike Brown. Mike Brown is on fire right now. Period. He won 10 fights in a row. Two of those being, like I said, Uriah Faber. Yeah, man, he finishes fights. He's not a decision, Dan he deserved number six number five George Rush St. Pierre St. Pierre 19 and 2 he cleaned out the division but I'm holding him at number five because I saw the grease okay there's a lot of controversy surrounding this guy and I'm gonna keep him at number five until he proves otherwise even Dana White admitted he greased was it intentional do we know his intentions no we don't we don't know if it by accident or if he grown accustomed to it but until I see this guy win one or two more fights in a row, he number five, but he could easily be number one. But for now, he number five. Got to dock him one or two because the guys in front of him have no controversy surrounding them. Number four, probably the man who delivered probably one of the greatest championship winning speeches in UFC history. I think it went something like, Drago, a champion. You want it. You can do it. Something like that. Leo Machida. He 15 and 0. He working his way on cleaning out the light heavyweight. And if he does that, he got. You can't pay this guy enough money because the light heavyweight's the most stacked division in MMA right now. You gotta put him up there with like the Boss Rutins, the Horse Gracies, the Kazushi Sakurabas. You gotta like put him in like MMA immortalization. If I, you know what I'm saying. If he do that. But the UFC haven't acquired uh, that Jagard Musasi yet, so that is yet to be determined. Lao Machida, number four. Number three, Anderson Spider Silva. Anderson, everybody know he jumping from 205 to 185, which is a bitch. That's a bitch. And Dana White running that dude like a horse, okay? And I think he's supposed to be fighting in January. And just the other day, my friend saw him in a cast in uh, Hermosa so I don't know how the fuck that gonna happen but they definitely running Anderson Silva into the ground and he still keep winning I got Anderson Silva at number three for the simple fact that he moved down from 230 pounds okay when he not in fight shape he, he's bigger and heavier than Rodrigo Nogueira his training partner so taking that into account this is top 10 pound for pound okay and he moving down to really lighter divisions so he had three number two Bring it on. I want to hear the arguments. I want to hear them. Jagar Musasi. 
he's getting acknowledgement now finally okay I had this guy in my top 10 pound for pound almost a year ago this guy needs to be known he got let me see, 13 wins in a row he's finished 11 out of his last 12 fights one of those going to decision that one that went to decision is only one of those 12 fights that went out of the first round hey guess what the UFC don't got the best 205 pounder in the world and the UFC don't got the best heavyweight in the world because number one pound for pound is Fedor Emelianenko. I'm on that same thought process as everybody else who think the way I do. Until Fedor Emelianenko beat, he number one. His only loss is on a random ass cut. He number one top ten pound for pound. Period. I don't need to talk about him because everybody know him. Actually, not, not everybody know who he is. They had a, a CBS commercial uh, during the football game. And, and I heard people say like, who the hell that fat guy? I was like, damn man, like that's not good. Like, if you don't know who the baddest man in the world is, like let's say you go to like some random bar in LA when he's doing a promotion, and you like accidentally bump into him, you gonna want to know who the baddest man on the planet is for now. That would definitely be uh, beneficial to your health. So. If you guys know someone who don't know who Fedor Melianenko is, you might want to print out a picture and hand it out. Because there's a lot of guys out there who think they tough shit who don't even know who the guy is. And um, that's not a good thing. Definite not a good thing. Definite.